Welcome to Yes Catholic, where real people share their real stories and discover God's grace at work in their lives. I'm your host, David Patterson, and every week we bring you inspiring guests who share how they came to say yes to Jesus and his church. Let's dive into their journeys of faith and see how grace is transforming lives in our world today. I'm really excited to welcome Michael Acaldo. Welcome. Thank you so much for taking the time to share your story. Thank you, David. I'm ready to say yes. Uh, I'm excited. This opportunity really gives me an opportunity to shed a great light on the wonderful work of the Society of St. Vincent de Paul. I love that. So why don't you share a little bit about yourself before we dive into the rapid fire? Well, you know, I think that uh, Scripture tells us that Christ must increase and we must decrease. And I think for me, I'm just a guy from Baton Rouge, Louisiana, that has been blessed in so many ways, blessed with a wonderful mother who passed away last year and a father who's 90 and is doing well. Such a blessing to be raised in a Catholic home with a commitment to our faith, opening my heart to doing all the things our church calls us to do, which I know we're going to get into in this podcast. But for me, my biggest struggle is just life, you know, and the pursuit of trying to be more Christ-like. Christ is perfect. We are not. So although we want to increase in that, I have found in my own personal life that's very difficult because we're human beings with all those human desires and human frailties that Jesus had, but he was divine and perfect. We're not. We have to pursue that. So I was blessed with the opportunity to be at the Society of St. Vincent de Paul as their executive locally from the age of I was I was hired in December of 89 at 22, all, almost 35 years of service there as a local executive. And now I've been blessed with the opportunity to be the national CEO. I'm in my second month of that. And uh, I know in the interview, we're going to talk about the wonderful work of the society and how I have personally been shaped by our Vincentian members who just live the gospel every day. I love that, brother. Well, let's get to know you a little more with the rapid fire. I'm going to rhyme off some questions just to get to know you a little bit better. Describe yourself as a kid in three words. Very creative, abundantly. And that, that doesn't really make sense, but I'm abundantly creative. And I give that to the good Lord Jesus. Are you a morning person or a night owl? Morning. Always morning? Not really, but I want to be a morning person. That's my, I wanted to trick you there. It didn't work. But in, in reality, you know, uh, that's my weakness. I am a night person, but morning is an opportunity to grow. Go to order at a coffee shop. Right now it's pumpkin spice, but uh, in about a month it'll be that peppermint mocha. Go to short prayer. You're going about your day. The short prayer for me is the glory be. It's, it's, it, it, it tells it all, and it really puts us in the right spirit. If you could have coffee with any saint, who would it be? It'd be St. Vincent de Paul, of course. Okay, last one. If you could ask God one question, what would it be? How can I be more perfect like your son, Jesus? Beautiful. Well, let's begin with a prayer, and then we will share your story. And I just thought, let's just pray the, the prayer of St. Vincent de Paul. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Tender God, refuge of the poor, you filled Vincent de Paul with strength of the apostles to work for the salvation of the poor and the instruction of the clergy. May we who follow the example of his life be driven by unceasing charity to continue the mission of your Son in the world. We ask this through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. In the name of the Father, and of the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. All right, Michael, let's dive right in. Where does your story begin? Oh, my story, as I said earlier, begins in Baton Rouge, Louisiana, and the pursuit and the desire of mine to, you know, follow the teachings of my parents. You know, I have uh, my father is 90 now and lifelong Catholic. My mother was a convert to Catholicism. And so I really had the opportunity to kind of live in a, a home 
that was full of the church and um, had the cradle Catholic and the convert. And as you know, being Catholic yourself, um, there's a differential there. And so I got two parents that uh, made it clear how important faith was and lived their faith in a remarkable way that at now almost 58 years old, I'm tra- still trying to pursue. I think some of my challenges is, as I mentioned to you earlier, Christ is perfect, we are not. And so I was raised in a home that we should strive for that perfection, that we should strive to do what's necessary to grow in holiness, as our Vincentian family calls us. So when in 1989, when I was getting close to graduating from LSU, I applied for a job. It was uh, actually, it was a blind ad. It wasn't, you know, St. Lisa de Paul needs his first ever executive director. It was instead just a nonprofit needs executive for, you know, organization. And I applied and I went into the interview and not ever thinking about working either for the church or for uh, a Catholic organization like the Society of St. Vincent de Paul. But the minute I sat down with the search committee, you know, I could feel, you know, their Christian calling to seek and find the forgotten, the suffering and pride. And I could see their commitment. And being raised at the home I was raised in, I said, this is something I just hope God blesses me with the opportunity. I was 22 to, and just got my degree from LSU and business management. So I had not a lot of experience, but I went to Catholic high school in Baton Rouge. That's a Brothers of the Sacred Heart School. And the brothers were great. And I had the opportunity to work with one brother, Brother Don and Barry. He ran the development activities for the school. And so in high school and then even in college, I was work, able to work in the development office and just see how he put his faith into action, all of the brothers of the Sacred Heart, and was inspired by that. So I was open to this opportunity. And what I found very early on was the Vincentian family, those Vincentians that make up the Society of St. Vincent de Paul, are people that live their faith, true to their faith. They say yes, like you've asked me to say today, to their faith. And, you know, as a kid, I really learned so much from their wisdom and from how they live their faith in such a remarkable fashion. And so for me, it has shaped me. It has uh, provided me the opportunity to grow in holiness. Um, But as we know, a a spiritual journey is the start, and and we're never where we want to be. If you ask St. Mother Teresa about her spiritual growth, if you look at various interviews, she could say, she had a long way to go. Well, if St. Mother Teresa had a long way to get it, we all got a long way to get, go. So for me, whether I was a local executive in you know Baton Rouge for almost 35 years or two months here as a national CEO, I think my struggle is pursuing that perfection because you're never going to get there. And when I do fall, it's hard to get up. And so while I think that Jesus recognizes our weaknesses and understands that, I'm so blessed to be a part of the Catholic Church. You know, when I talk with some of our fellow brothers and sisters in the Christian community, or you know, they're often shocked that every square inch of the world is covered by the Catholic Church. Somebody, there's a bishop somewhere an archbishop somewhere, a cardinal that covers every square inch, and that's because of the tremendous love Jesus had for each and every one of us. So when I do fall, I know Jesus is there to help pick me up, and I just sometimes need to get out of the way and let him do that and to hear his voice, because I believe Jesus talks to all of us. We may not hear his voice, but he's talking to us. I struggle sometimes 
to listen. And I think that's what our call is. And that's part of my story. But um, I know I was concise about all those years. But it comes down to one thing. It comes down to others. And that's what the Society of St. Vincent de Paul is all about. I love that. Did you have any experience with St. Vincent de Paul prior to the job application? I had absolutely none. I mean, certainly the national CEO, after doing it 35 years, I was kind of a, a bunch of Vincentians wrapped up in one because I never met a St. Vincent de Paul member that I didn't learn or grow from. They're just a tremendous group of people that as a family walk the talk and they they do what's necessary to uh, really fulfill what our church calls us to do as Catholics. And so, but initially, no, I, I wasn't even familiar. And my dad worked for the Diocese of Baton Rouge for a period of time, opened their printing department, ran it for many years until he opened his own printing shop. And so when I found out it was a Society of St. Vincent Paul, I asked my dad, and he says, that's a good group, but, you know, he, he didn't know a lot about them. And I think that's something that we're trying to do at a national level is we've been in the United States of America. Next year marks our 180th year. We need to make sure every Catholic, everyone knows about the good work of the Society of St. Vincent de Paul. And so how has your faith been impacted by being involved in St. Vincent de Paul? No doubt about it, on my spiritual journey, just tremendously so. And, I, you know, my faith has been strengthened in ways that can't, I can't use words to share with you, um, only to say, because words are just not, it's the wealth of the Vincentian family, the wisdom, and those who think of others before they think of themselves. I, Vincentian in Baton Rouge, recently told me, he made this statement, and he said, you know, Michael, we should be more concerned about the salvation of others than we should ourselves. And at first, I was kind of taken back by that because I thought we should focus. I, I had the airplane philosophy. You know, when you get on an airplane, they tell you the mask, if they fall down, you to put it on yourself. And then you're to save others, right? But when you think about the statement that Vincent just shared with me, it's true. If we're really caring about the salvation of others, you know, that other salvation for ourselves will follow. We can't save anyone if we're not focusing on that salvation. So I think from my standpoint, there are so many. That's just one example of countless examples where doing the work of St. Vincent de Paul, which is about seeing the face of Christ in each and every person we serve in need. And if we do a really good job, they see the face of Christ in us. So we become the face of Christ. And that, that's the perfection that I find often hard to deal with because I'm no Jesus, but I want to be like Jesus but I'm no Jesus. Hey friends, I want to pause for a moment to give a quick shout out to our friends at Tabella. They're a sponsor managing the production of this podcast so I can keep bringing these powerful stories to you week after week. Join ministry groups, stay connected to your parish, and grow in your faith with the best Catholic content, all for free on Tabella. If you haven't checked it out yet, you can download the Tabella app on the App Store or Google Play. You can use it to listen to all your favorite podcasts like this one, Father Mike Schmitz, Abiding Together, and more, as well as other exclusive content. You can also use Tabella as a communication tool for your parish or group. If you're interested in activating Tabella in your diocese, parish, or group, just head over to www.tabella.app to learn more. All right, let's get back to listening to God's grace at work in our world today. As you're speaking, Michael, it makes me think of St. Teresa, St. Mother Teresa, when she said that the gospel could be summed up in five words. You did it to me. How do you see this lived out in the St. Vincent de Paul Society? Every day, every second of the day, you know, we're recording this at a certain time. There are Vincentians that are going out for, they heard the call for, I would, you know, I'm hungry, and they've responded. I'm naked, they're providing clothes. I'm in need. They are doing that. I'm, I'm in prison. They're visiting those. 
in need. So every time they do that, they see the face of Christ and those they're blessed to serve. And St. Mother Teresa, she did that for Christ in a way that is just a priceless, remarkable way. And, you know, if you read a little bit, I know you have, David, about St. Mother Teresa. Early on, she wasn't overly excited about the media and, you know, getting exposure for all the things. But once she saw what that light of the gospel would be, she embraced it because she knew that the world needed Christ's light. And if she, in some small way, could be a part of that, that's what it's about, impacting others, saving others, and doing it in such a remarkable way. Us uh, non-saints that want to be saints, she's an example to follow because she did it for him. Absolutely. And so if someone's listening and would like to get involved with the mission of St. Vincent de Paul, how would they go about doing that? Easy thing. We're in the world of the internet, svdpusa.org. That's the best way to kind of connect. But if you're in any parish throughout the country, we have over 4,000 St. Vincent de Paul groups that would love to have your support. So look in your parish directory, and if there isn't a ministry of St. Vincent de Paul, go to your pastor and start one. Um, It's a great ministry. Our bishops and archbishops throughout the country support the ministry. Because, David, I know you know this, you know, the Society of St. Vincent de Paul is not a social service group. We are a spiritual organization because our members grow in holiness and in friendship with each other, in service to our neighbor in need. And our neighbor in need is Christ. And the only way we can get close to him is to serve him. And and that helps us to grow spiritual. I love that. And that's living out at its finest, the greatest commandment. Yes, it is. Love one another. That's my favorite scripture by far, because uh, if you love one another, what problem in the world does that not solve? Solves hunger, solves those who have material needs. It helps prevent homelessness. It does everything necessary to spreading Christ's message. And to me, we talked about St. Mother Teresa. I mean, you did it to me. You provided love, loving one another. And that's what I think we're all called to do. So what do you think are tangible things that everyday saints could do to make a difference in the world? Any thoughts there, Michael? Well, I, I think it goes back to that scripture. You know, how can I love my family, my friends, and those who maybe aren't as, as fortunate as I? How can I, you know, in the world today, there's a lot of hate. There's a lot of division. How can I bring love into that? And so I think the Vincentian family, the Society of St. Vincent de Paul, our members have seen Christ call to spread that love. And they do it by actively, you know, those 4,000 St. Vincent de Paul conferences, those are the groups that go out and make home visits and do all kinds of goodwill. They go in pairs to homes to people in need when maybe the parish gets a call for somebody that's about to get evicted or their lights turned off. And those members go in and in a very Christ-like manner help those who have that desperation. But it's not transactional. It's Vincentians are seen to be transformational so that we can stop people from experiencing homelessness, stop people from experiencing suffering. And that's what that call is. And that's what Christ's love is. You know, when Christ was with us, he would send his disciples out. And his message was, like when he fed 5,000, you know, his message was, if we all come together, we can do it. We can't do it like Christ did it, but we can follow his example and together do it in a remarkable way. I kind of want to go back a little bit to you sharing about how you want to be perfect like Christ, but we're broken and we fall. Yes, we are. 
I'm just kind of wondering, Michael, like what helps you rise? Because the difference between the sinners and the saints is that the saints keep getting back up and they keep trying. And so what helps you when you do stumble and fall? Well, you know, I heard this. Actually, I, I know this quote has been around a long time, but I heard it many years ago on All Saints Day uh, in a homily where the, the pastor uh, of the parish I was living in at that time reminded everyone that every saint has a past and every sinner has a future. So when I screw up, which we're all broken, we all mess up, you know, I remember that saying because, you know, I, I think of the saints themselves as examples. You know, St. Peter, who denied Christ three times. I mean, he lived with, he walked on water with Jesus until he lost faith and went under the water. So, but what happened with Peter, St. Peter? I mean, he then took up the, his own cross and carried it to his own death. I mean, those are saints that are examples that I follow, but there are those everyday saints that exist right here. And, you know, you can see them in action. If you try to give them credit for anything, they're going to deflect. I mean, they're going to give everybody in the world credit but themselves. They'll begin with Jesus and, and, and our Lord, and then, but everybody here on the planet, they'll give credit to. They won't take any credit for themselves. And then they're making an impact on people. And, and so for me, that helps me. But uh, like many of us, we are our hardest critic. And sometimes if we are our hardest critic, that's kind of when the devil kind of gets in. I mean, you know, he sees a door, he's going to pop into it. So whatever your weakness may be, he will. He's pounding on that door. The problem is Jesus is there for us. He is the door. He's stopping that. And when we let, when we open the door, when we know we're not supposed to, Jesus is there to close it. He's also there to forgive our sins and do what's necessary to get us back on track. You know, I believe our God is a God that's looking for reasons to let us into heaven not to keep us out. And so that means that as a sinner, I got a future with him. I've been looking up a lot of quotes on hope because we are kind of in that being pilgrims of hope. And one of my favorite quotes that I've come across so far is consult not your fears, but your hopes and your dreams. Think not about your frustrations, but about your unfulfilled potential. Concern yourself not with what you have tried and failed in, with what it is, what is still possible for you to do. That just shows that we all have infinite opportunities to grow, infinite opportunities to go from where we're at to where we can be. And I think that's what Jesus' call is to us. I think, you know, his call is for us to let those anxieties go by, those fears go by, and try to, you know, Who's going to get between us and the best we can be? Us. Because we don't let that hatred in the world that I mentioned earlier, David, we can insulate ourselves from it. We cannot let it affect us. But for me, it's a constant battle, you know, of letting that try to, you know, constantly remembering that we can insulate ourselves from it. Jesus is the best insulation to anything in the world. And remembering that and keeping that in front of us is what's so critical. And I think all of those things that have been recognized by the church, they give us from just unbelievable examples to follow because they've been successful in overcoming everything that we face. Absolutely. Well, I always love to ask every guest this question is, what is your hope for the future of our church? Well, you know, that question, I thought a lot about it uh, relative to the power of hope in that, you know, the church, think of the world today without the Catholic Church. What kind of world would we live in? The church has, has just impacted everything. 
people don't know know that. You know, it's 2024, it's going to be 2025. The calendars, mate, but has been impacted by Jesus. Everything we do. So I think that the, the, the future of the church is as bright as ever because Jesus is as bright as ever. I think uh, what we have to do as Catholics is to grow spiritually, to deal with all the things I've talked about that are my personal challenges relative to that lack of perfection, recognizing that lack of perfection and trying to work on that lack of perfection and trying to get through that because the church is there. The church's message to every one of us is about Christ's love and his commandment to love one another. And I think that that's why the future of the church is so bright. And I think the church is often, you know, targeted because it is a message of love. And, and everything built around the gospel, there are boundaries. You know, there are things that we shouldn't do. And there are opportunities for us to grow in that way so we can be the best we can be. And the church is the, the bright light of hope for the world until Jesus comes back. And until that happens, the church's future is as bright as the day it was found. I think the Holy Spirit's at work because the verse on my phone, I get a quote every day, and it is actually John fifteen twelve, which is, this is my commandment, that you love one another as I have loved you. That's right. That, that is the commandment. And if you think about it, I've read things talking about St. John. And, and, you know, he was the only disciple that, you know, did not die a mortar's death. But he, in, in a very, very true sense, you know, if you read about some of his preachings toward the end of his life, he lived a very long life. It was all about that message of love. And that, you know, sometimes those that would hear him, you know, preach the gospel, they kind of got tired of hearing that message. It's not that complicated. You know, the gospel is love. And, you know, I, I, I had the blessing of being uh, growing up in St. Aloysius Parish in Baton Rouge, and the Daughters of Jesus taught at that school, and I was touched by so many of the sisters uh, there. It's an order out of Spain, and uh, the Daughters of Jesus, one of them, you know, in talking to your spirit, talking to you and giving you spiritual direction, they would all, often ask this one question. It was Sister Rosary. That was her name. And Sister Rosary would say, how have you loved? And tied to that, that gospel is, how have you loved? And how are you fulfilling that most important commandment? And I think sometimes we get lost in that. You know, when somebody drives in front of us, when you were at the stop sign first, or, you know, sometimes you know, it's, it's, how can I not follow that example? How can I follow? How can I love that person? How can I see someone? Like for me, one thing that's disturbing to me, David, is that in my 35 years as part of the Society of St. Vincent de Paul, I have seen those experiencing homelessness where I would say 99.9% .9 of the country, when they saw somebody experiencing homelessness, they the pain, they hurt inside. They felt the suffering of that human being. Now, not so much so. I mean, there are a certain percentage of people that kind of have a negative feeling toward that human being, that child of God that may be living in a tent or whatever. That That's where that message of love comes in. How can I make a difference? How can I make sure that I can try to help that person and in Baton Rouge, as well as throughout the entire country, like Phoenix, Arizona, or Cincinnati, or Atlanta, we are doing homeless prevention to prevent that situation, but also to respond to it so people that are in need can feel God's loving hand and the help they need to break that cycle of homelessness and put the pieces of their lives back together again. On that note, Michael, I just want to thank you so much for your yes to Jesus and his church. It's been such a blessing to be able to hear you share how you're, how God has moved in your life 
but also the mission of St. Vincent de Paul. If people would like to learn more, how can they connect? Best way, svdpusa.org. We'd love for you to be a part of our Vincentian family here at the Society of St. Vincent de Paul. That's great. What would you like to close us in prayer tonight? Yes, and I would really like to thank you for the opportunity to be with you and to just shed the bright light of hope and love on our wonderful Catholic Church. And I would like to read a prayer for everyday saints in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Heavenly Father, thank you for all of the blessings you have given me in my life. Thank you for your guidance and for leading us to a mission of charity. We ask you to watch over our neighbors in need, especially those who feel lost and are unaware of your love for them. Like the saints who came before us, help us to always remember those who are suffering. Guide our hearts and minds as we encounter those in need. Protect them from harm and fill their hearts with peace. St. Vincent de Paul, pray for us. Amen. In the name of the Father, Son, Holy Spirit. Thank you so much, David. Thank you, Michael. Thank you for listening. If you enjoy this episode and want to support our ministry, please share it with others, post about it on social media, and leave a rating and review. To stay updated with the latest stories, follow us on Instagram at yes.catholic and visit our website at yescatholic.com. If Yes Catholic has made a difference in your life, consider joining our Patreon community at patreon.com slash yescatholic. A big shout out and thank you to our current patrons for all the prayers, support, and contributions that help us reach thousands of souls around the world every week. Let's remember the words of St. Peter. Always be prepared to make a defense to anyone who calls you to account for the hope that is in you. You have a story. Don't be afraid to share the good news of how Jesus has moved in your life with a family member, friend, or colleague. Give Jesus your yes every single day and witness the ripple effect of the gospel. Join us next week as we continue the journey right here at Yes Catholic.